Okay, that better? All righty. Now, <coughs> so um, what does this feels weird? Anyway, I'll, I'll make do. So um, I if we're going to make application containers to deploy with Docker, why do we need to do that? Why can't we just use build packages for our operating system and tie into the, oh, the whole distribution network that we that we have, like Satellab, App, Pac-Man, Debian packages? Well, building native packages is um, somewhat difficult, and then you have version dependencies of various libraries, and if you want ten different versions of Node.js, you have issues. Um, at every um, language um, runtime has their own own little package managers. Got virtual in for for Python, RBM for Ruby. Um, Perl has a thing. I think Haskell people have a thing. Um, so it's hard hard to get all that, all that to work out at the operating system level. So one way to solve that was we have the Universal installer script. So I don't know if y'all can see that or not. But um, obviously, that's not going to work either. <coughs> so let's talk about application containers. An application container simply is, is a it's a thing consisting of application dependent libraries, frameworks, everything a developer needs to work together to run. The the application, and I'll call that the container. So, um, essentially, the application container should capture the whole dependency graph of <coughs> a everything the applica application needs, all the way from the the language runtime all the way down to the um, Bootstrap compilers. Um, for instance, if you, if you if you're building a Python application, it may be important to know how the Python binary was compiled. And once you build, if you build this container in a thing, you can essentially cop pick it up and copy it and run it anywhere, and it should run exactly like like the developer wants it to run. Um, there are uh, various tools that can that try to solve this problem. There's Snap, which is popular for Ubuntu, and Flatpak, which is Red Hat. Um, but I don't know a whole lot about those, so I'm not going to talk about them. But they are there. And then Docker is the, um, seems to have the most market share, or I guess market share, my, my share at the moment what people are forcing me to use. So I'm saying they may not be the best solution. Uh oh. Um and there are other other people are trying to solve this deployment deployment situation with operating systems and package managers like Nix and Geeks. <coughs> and um so now I'll spend a few minutes and talk about Docker. I guess if you, how many people use Docker? How many people use Docker because they think that's a good solution as opposed to it was forced on them? But anyway, I'm, I'm sure if you, if you use Docker, you're familiar with this Docker file. And this is an example I found. And it builds a simple um, Flask application in this case. And you can see at the top it says from Ubuntu latest. That's going to pull down the latest Ubuntu image. 
whatever that is. Has to do various updates and install Python things. But with that, with Docker, you can you can build that and um, deploy it into your Docker in infrastructure. So um, I don't have my notes up here. On um, potential issue issues with that, you may you may not be fully aware of all your of your whole dependency graph. I mean, from Ubuntu latest, okay, it, it pulls the latest Ubuntu down. What does that mean? When, when I did it on, on, on my laptop, it pulled down 1804. If I do that two months from now, it may be a different version. And you don't really know what is in, in, in any, of the, any of these things, unless you fixate the, if you have your own Ubuntu distribution and you can control everything, then you can start making this thing more re reproducible. Um, maybe that's important. Maybe it's not. I tend to think it is. And once you create this Docker image, it is rather opaque. You, you can't reason about it. You don't. You can't, it's hard to determine exactly what's in it. Um, Geeks is a package manager. That will, that uh, it, it, it wasn't built to, to solve this particular problem, but as a side effect, it kind of does. What Geeks is, is a, um, essentially it's a, a functional package manager, has per user profiles, it supports transaction upgrades and rollbacks for various packages, and it doesn't require root once it's installed. So if I want to have a Python 2. Dot, or Python 3.7 in my environment, I can do that. If a fellow developer on the box wants to have 3.5, he is free to do that. If I want to have both Python 3.5 and 3.7, I can set up different profiles and do that. Or if for some reason I want to compile Python with Clang and put on various debug, debug files, I can have both exist in my profile and switch freely back and forth. E each package is essentially defined by our um, in, in embedded DSL, which is built on top of Scheme, in particular Gal. And the package on um, build process is also defined by the same on top of DSL. And the, the way the way the way um, Geeks achieves this is that every time it builds a package, it, lo it looks at all the um, basically the dependency tree, the thing you're trying to build, the runtimes it needs, all the libraries, and the bootstrap compilers, and encapsulates all that into a cryptographic hash, and stores that particular package in, a immu in an immutable store that's tied to that hash. So that you can support multiple versions, different people or or um, different um, in, in different profiles. And another advantage of doing that, if I need to install some big Go ac um, Haskell application that pulls down certain dependencies, and somebody else needs to in also install a, a Haskell that, sh that has the same same libraries. It's put in such a way that the that it's shared across users, so I only only need one copy of the particular package at this particular version. So, for instance, yes, yes, you you can get it'll be a separate at runtime. For instance. Um, I installed Python on my box last night, and it um, landed in this directory name. Um, there's this big cache at the front. Um, captures the Python 3.7 um, sources and, and all its dependencies. So, for instance, if I want to um, recompile this Python with different compiler flags, for whatever reason, 
it will build the package, but it will have a, it will have a different hash. Although it will still be version 3.7. And I don't have my machine to demo this, but but Geek supports profiles, so I can switch back and forth on fa fairly easily. It, it does this by managing sim links in, into the GNU store. Um. Well, the cryptographic hash is based on compiler configuration options, build scripts, and all 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 the other inputs needed to make the package. Yeah. You'll get a hash of the source of the source package. It'll um and um the geeks people also built a um Linux distribution based on this package manager called Geeks SD. Which you get, you get the the rollback and roll forward transactional upgrades, but at the system level, which is r really nifty. And about a year ago, um, they invented this new command for Geeks called Geeks Pack, and it will actually create a bundle of the given packages and all of its dependencies. I can run. If for some reason I wanted to give somebody a, a Gal SDK and they weren't lucky enough to be running Geeks, I, I can run Geeks Packs, Geek, Geeks Pack, and these package names Gal, Emacs, and Emacs Dash Geyser, and it will create a tarball of the relevant packages out of GNU Store. And this tarball can be copied to the to a box and un unpacked in root and then you just run this big long path to get to get the run gal. That's not exactly user friendly because nobody wants to type in that big long path. So what what we can do is when we create the pack, we can tell it sim link um op GNU bin and in, into bin in the GNU store. And build the same and build the same package. Now, if I copy that file to another box and unpack it in root, then I'll be able to just run slash op slash gnu slash bin slash gal and be able to do gal work. And if that's not good enough, if you want more isolation, you can un unpack this somewhere, like under slash temp slash pack is what I used. And once you unpack it there, you can run this um, un 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 unshared change root. And then you have a change root that's running. And all it has access to is the um, gal commands. I'm not sure how much sense it makes to do that for gal, but if you want to put Apache or Nginx or your fra favorite flash app, you can do the same thing. So I know exactly what I have. I can land it on another box and r run the thing in the change root. And it should be fairly isolated. Um, the only requirement for the other box, it needs to have a Linux kernel three dots up to another to support the uh, unshared namespaces. Um, but if that's not good enough, I can say give it um, minus self docker to the geeks pack command. And guess what it makes? It makes a trouble that can be used consumed by Docker. So you actually Docker load this trouble and it creates a um, Docker container that can be run. So the difference is this, yes sir. I do not know what that means. So 
but I do not know. But it's, suppo it's supposedly conforms to the to the specs for the Docker files. And my laptop didn't blow up. I could show you the the um, differences. But with this um, building the Docker image through Geeks, you know exactly what you have, and it's fairly easy to re reproduce because all all of the Geeks packages are. Um, the the whole geek system is is defined as a git is a um is, is stored in git so i can look at the git actual git commit i, ha I had on the system that the system that i used to build this you can check out that same git commit and reproduce this container and if you compare it back for back which is um i think it's kind of ne neat And that is a very short talk. Yes. Now, now there, there, there are some source packages that, that won't build deterministically. Yes, but I, I didn't do a, scr a screen dump. I should have, but but if you look at the the um if you if you look in Geek Store, yeah, everything is owned by um root root, and the timestamp is set to the epoch. So that when you create the tarball, it's a I think the format they call it is NAR, which is the Nix archive, which is essentially the same thing as tar. But the all the timestamps timestamps are set to the epoch, and the user ID and the UID GID are set to zero zero. So if I build the thing on my box, and build the thing on this box, they will compare byte for byte. There's also a, a subsystem in Geeks. You can say I can say Geeks challenge, name of package. It will build it on my box. It will look at the upstream build farm, and Compare. And if you want to want to really get into it, you can do do um cycle, by cycle two or cycle three. It'll build a package three times and see if you get the same result. That's how you can detect if the package yes sir. Oh. He was asking about the format of the package definition. Um, but it's not YAML. It, it's a scheme. I, I don't have a dump here. Yes, yeah, it, it is a lisp. So it's, it's very concise. Can, can I get to the web on your box? F11, do you use this KDE thing? Do, 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 do. Oh, do, 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 do. Ah, your keys aren't mapped right. Oh, you don't have geeks on this box. That's unfortunate. Because <laughs> then I type geek set it package and it would bring one up for me. Oh, you don't want to look at those. Look at upstream. Where else? 
Oh, do, 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 do. Where's the new? Packages. Let's pick one. Python. I want to build Python. Control C of plus, 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 plus. How's that? Can I make this full screen too? What? Oh. Bigger. Bigger, bigger. Here. That help? <laughs> no, this example of two, um, oh, that's doing some fancy stuff. What's a simple example? Yeah. I just took my picture. Do 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 do. Auto key. Who? A T T R. Let's see what's in here. Oh. Yes, yeah, called Emacs. <laughs> well, here I'll look, look at a package I, I wrote, which may or may not be useful. Oh, I'll mention this too. This is how I build the kernel for my box. Because Geeks is um really really cares about software freedom. So if you have a laptop with Wi-Fi that doesn't have um free free fr free firmware, it's not going to be happy. So I need I I I Wi-Fi. I need this firmware blob from out from my laptop to work, so I define this package. Yeah, um, a, a lot of this. Well, that's the version number from the Git checkout. So it pulls from from this particular Git. It pulls a particular Git checkout from the kernel version. This this um. Where is it? SHA-256-32, that hash, um, there's a macro that generates that for you, so you don't have to key that in by hand. And this is simple, the um, build system. It gets a trivial build system. And I, I take the source, land it where I want, want to land it, and it pretty much will build the package with that definition. But then I also have to use the um, mainline kernel version for non-free firmware blobs to work. And this is the package def definition from that. And what that, l that looks like, I, defi I define my package be Linux non-free. This is a particular version 4.11 of the kernel. But I don't have to do a lot. I say inherit from Linux Libre, which is the kernel that Geeks built for the system. So the, in, in the inherit word means I want to use that package, but then I'm going to change it in, in the way that's listed here. So I'm, I'm given a, a different source. And um, 
when you have all, all your package definitions in a um, declared DSL, you can do interesting things like that. Do 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 do. But that's not. It's just straightforward um, list code. So uh, that's not. If you if you like this idea but don't want to do Lisp, um, the 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 Nick Nix package manager has some very similar design goals, but they have some weird other DSL type thing. What was that? Yeah. Oh, you use Nix? Cool. They they aren't as pedantic about not letting no. non-free software in. So. Well, wow. Sure. Yes, it, it uses namespaces. Yeah, yes. Yes, it, it requires a minimal, minimal kernel version <coughs> to support the namespaces. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well I mean, to, to set up the change root, obviously you have, to, you have to run that as root, but, it, but then it drops privileges. With, with Docker, you have the Docker binary on, on the host, and it's really trivial to, yeah, but with, with Docker, it's kind of easy to get root. Yeah, I, th yeah, I, th I think. Yeah, yeah I, th I think. Yes. Yes. If, but it, but it, if you actually, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, if if you're actually running geeks on on the system, yeah, if you're actually running geeks on the system, you have more tools you can use. There's a um, you can create ad hoc environments with with geeks. So you do geeks environment, ad hoc packages you want to install, and there's a new feature in the um development branches where you can go to geeks environment dash dash container and do all your packages. And it isolates it in a change root using um, namespaces automatically. But that's coming attraction. Yeah, I, I I don't know anyone. Well, <laughs> I, I I know there's people doing like high performance computing and genetic research using using geeks, but I don't know if they're public facing. But I, I have a I converted my website to geeks. Yes, so that, that's production.
for arm. Yes. Yes. Because you brought all, all the packages are in a good new store. And that's a mutable thing. And when you install a package in your profile, it, it creates a symlink from a profile to a global profile and from that profile into the good news store. And the global pro global global profiles are essentially um, DC protected routes. So your store won't get garbage collected, which is another feature. If there are no active profiles pointing to the packages in, in the in the store, you can run Geeks Garbage Collect, and it'll clean up your space. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. On the on the the new, the new container part of the yeah. Geeks environment, that's what they're working on. Right now, it just does user username spaces. Yeah, but network name spaces are are on the are, are on the to, to do list. Yes. Oh, wow, cool. E Emacs? <laughs> yes. Yeah, there, there's, there is actually a, a Geeks package mode for, for Emacs. So. Um, can I get SSH on this box? Oh, oh, well, never, never mind. I'll, I'll do this. I, I, I was going to show you, show y'all if y'all are interested. How are you, um, machine definition looks, of course this is old. Anyway, th this is an older laptop I had and this is its definition. For instance, I want the, um, SSH, I, I, want, I want everywhere, or I need these modules to build other, other things. I define an operating system. I give it a host name, time zone, locale. I define, tell them I'm using the EFI version of Grub on dev SDA. These are my file systems, my swap device, and a few user accounts. And, and these Globally install packages, the packages that will get installed in at, at the system level, which those are kind of important to have. And then here, here I'm um, loading GNOME XFCE and giving it a um, SSH server. And I don't like the desktop services by default, so I'm adding. Um, here I'm, I'm, I'm adding my, my um, build, build farm to the substitutes so I don't have to pull everything from upstream. And um, you, you download the um, Geeks ISO in installer. Yes, you boot the installer. Um, you find your, uh, yes. 
And when you get your file when you get when you get your file system set up, you do git you say geek system configure um slash mount wherever you have got your file system mounted and give it this scheme file. Yes. Yes. Well you have to build your partitions ahead of time at the moment. One thing it doesn't support yet is LVM, which is unfortunate. It doesn't support LVM. They haven't figured out how to do the transactional upgrades yet. Oh, you mean like LVM snapshot? No. If I build a system configuration on LVM and my next configuration has a file system called Big File System okay. and I roll back, yeah. what does that file system do? It should no longer exist. But if I put the old configuration and I scan the LVM devices, that file system will still show up on my on my list. Yeah. Or I use use partitions, and I don't want the partition, the file system doesn't show up in the kernel. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I haven't had time to solve that problem yet. Um, oh good, I got a few minutes left. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, the, um, it started with Nix. Uh, yeah, and then, then Lilo, yeah, that guy. Yes, it was actually. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been a while. Uh, I thought Lu Ludo did a PhD thesis. I thought. Yeah. Yeah, he did. yeah, 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 I th yeah. He did, but I thought Geeks was his research project, but I I I, I don't remember. I, th I I discovered it, I guess about three years ago. And I think it's a really novel solution. He hit version one back in May. And version 1.01 a few <laughs> weeks later, it, it now has an actual text-based installer. Yes. How much mind share does Geeks do? With I don't care about like the entire thing, but is there a good recovery for Geeks? How do you find out about Geeks? I don't know. I th I think I was looking at at a at a Foz, at Fosnium videos. At, at where? Oh, yes, it is there. It is listed there now. Ah. Oh. Yeah, app isn't transaction transactional either. Hmm. Well, that's really all I had, especially since my laptop won't display things. 
All righty. Thank you. <laughs> how, how do I turn this off now?
greetings, users. Are you, what, what is this? Oh. Active Directory. No, just oh, kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> Acrid Directory. No, it's about uh, Red Hat Identity Management. It's a very, it's a very high-level overview. Nope. Because it's Linux. I plead the fifth. I'm a middle one.